Here's a very personal question I have to ask. Have you ever had to deal with changes someone made in your Excel spreadsheet, but there was no way to track what was changed and most important of all, when was it changed? Well, enter the Excel change log feature and all it requires are this simple VBA script. Start off by right clicking on your sheet and go view code. In here, you're gonna paste this VBA code if you do require a copy with this VBA script, kindly please leave a request on the comment section of this video and I'll send it to you. Let's dissect this VBA script a bit here. There's basically two subroutines here. One of them is called worksheet change, which get executed when you make any cell value changes here. And then another one is called worksheet selection change, so that when you select a particular cell, this will get executed. The intent of this is to actually save the currently selected cell values into a string call uh, str last value as a variable which is a global variable here as well now let's look at the worksheet change here so like i said this on this subroutine can only get executed when you make changes to your cell values here the first section of the code prevents uh, infinite recursive calls because like i said this get executed when you make changes to the cell there's a couple of cell changes that we're performing here this section of code prevents it to go any further because you'll exit subroutine and the only time this will allow you to execute the remaining of the code is when all this are finished and this boolean lock is set to false. So let's look a bit further here. This section essentially just defines a variable and associate the worksheet name to a variable or rather the object name called log sheet here. And then in this section here is where you start writing the log on the log sheet. This one returns the last cell in the first column the first column pertains to this number here. Likewise, this one returns the very last cell on the second column, very last cell on the third, fourth, and so on columns. And then there's another section here of this uh, routine. It calls for nxlookup, which is essentially an Excel VBA method that is used to find the end of a range, which is non-empty in a cell in a particular direction. In this case, is going to excel upwards. So if you put them these two uh, routines together, this two statement in a nutshell will return the last row of the log sheet. And if you want to put things into perspective, if I go back to my VBA here on the log in particular, it essentially means that it returns the very last entry on your log sheet. This this guy here. And then there's another section uh, right of that is called offset by one. This one will return the next adjacent value or the next row after the very last row, which allows you to start entering uh, all the latest log on the bottom of this list here, which you will see here shortly. So we are tracking the current date timestamp as now. And then this target cell actually captures the sheet name itself. So when you make changes to sheet number 330, it will be reflected here. If you make changes to sheet 313, It'll be reflected there as well and so on and then uh, this address is basically the cell location and this str last value is got captured here when you make changes to a selection on your cell like that is basically saving let's say isabel here into a variable and essentially populating back if you make any changes and this target value is from this argument here is whatever new values that you have entered so Basically, if you look at your log file, you'll capture the date timestamp. Uh, it will do a sheet name, where the changes was made, what was the changes before, and what's the new changes here. Let's go ahead and uh, go to our VBA Control S to save, and let's close our VBA editor here. These two are the same worksheet. It's just that I put them in the two different windows, so you can actually see them in action. You can see it's the same log sheet that I'm looking at. So let's say, for example, if I were to change uh, Mackenzie to say Neo. If you hit enter here, you can see that the last known value was Mackenzie and Neo is a new change. So basically, there's two subroutine running to capture and to update the new value here. And likewise, let's say for example, if you were to upgrade this Charlie's Robinson to account manager and you type account manager like that, you can see that it captures the before and after. You can also make changes to the account uh, employee ID. You can see that was the last known value and was the new change.
And just as a bonus, if you're wondering how I format this timestamp and the date, if I go say control one to open up cell formatting for this particular cell, you can see this is the formatting structure I'm using it.